Hey guys, this is Stinger from the Ghost Squad and Airsoft team, and today I'm going to be doing some tech work on Frankie's AKS-74U. I don't think that he plans on using this gun personally, but I believe it's for someone else. He told me a little bit about that, I don't remember the exact details. So this is essentially a burner gun or a loner gun for him. Uh, I don't know how he got it, probably from Future Ball. It is one of the Kalishnikov branded models, which is essentially just a SEMA rebrand. So it should be of all right quality. Um, this is basically just the way that it came out of the gun bag that he gave it to me in. Um, partially disassembled with uh, a lot of the external parts sitting inside of a plastic bag here. So I'll have to figure out exactly how that goes together, but it seems like it's pretty similar to my AK Mod 47B uh, made by Echo One. So. What we're going to do is first do a cycle test of it to see uh, how it's working, then I'll shoot it and see if it has any issues. But Frank was basically just complaining that it had some feeding issues and some range loss, uh, considerable range loss, so there's likely a compression leak somewhere. Um, but we'll just cycle it real quick first to determine if there's any other problems that we can find out initially without actually shooting it before we, uh, well, shoot it. Okay, so it's in semi-auto, and I have had I have it pointed at a bullet trap. There's nothing in it. It's on a 9.6 volt battery right now, wired to Tamiya, as you can see. Um, seems like the receiver is kind of ringing a little bit, making a ringing noise. But other than that, it sounds all right. The trigger response is not that bad for it being a stock SEMA uh, and a 9.6 volt. And there's a little bit of motor whine, it's not that bad. Full auto is kind of crap though. That whine is really annoying, or that um, ringing is really annoying. All right, so now I will load up a mid cap and see how it shoots. So I just loaded it up and it shot. It didn't seem like there was too much wrong. Each BB that was coming out was coming out fast enough. The hop up is totally turned off. Whoops, forgot to remove those. Um, the hop up was not turned on. So they were dropping pretty fast, but as far as velocity goes, they seem to be going at a normal rate. So what I'm gonna do is just do a total tune up of the gun uh, inside and out basically um, figure this out so I can get it back together uh, degrease it clean regrease it possibly shim it depending on how the shimming is set the motor height and pretty much go from there depending on how it looks inside so just an overall tune up and then see if there are still issues if there are after that I'll have to try and narrow it down a bit more specifically so time to start disassembly so I took the pistol grip off and I noticed that the wiring connectors are soldered on to the motor itself. So that might make things a little tricky there. Uh, I'll have to just keep it attached the whole time. Uh, now to, actually I'll pull the motor out right now just so we can get a look inside the gearbox and see how it's looking. There it is. It looks really dry. As in, there's like no lubrication on it at all. Yeah, there's like no lubrication on the gears. There's a little bit like on the gearbox shell and on the side of the gear, but not very much on the gear surface itself. So that's a problem. So I separated the two halves of the gun, and you can see down the barrel there. Not sure how well you can see it, but it is a bit dirty. So I'll clean that out, probably disassemble the hop-up unit and clean it also. But for now I'm going to focus on this and getting this out of here so we can work on the gearbox. So the worst thing about disassembling AKs is that the safety mechanism is really complicated. The safety on the AK is on the right side, but the way it interfaces with the gearbox is on the left side. That's where the selector plate actually is. So what they have to do is they have to use a system of gears to transfer the motion over onto the other side and that just makes it way too complex so that's what I'm working on getting off right now 
Okay, so I got it disassembled and there is grease leaking from every crack where grease could possibly leak from. I mean, if I just wipe my hand on it, this is really nasty. There's grease just coating the entire gearbox shell right here. You can see the safety mechanism. Whoops. That goes on there like that. And then this takes the motion around to the other side where there's the selector plate here. There's a clip on top. This thing, it's holding the wiring in place and it also holds the gearbox shells together. So that has to come off. All right, that came off. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out. It's just got a screw going down the middle of it. There we go. Every single part on here is just coated in grease. I don't know if it's actually been leaking out of the gearbox or if they just coated every part of it in grease when they were making this or something. But it, it's everywhere. And I haven't even opened the gearbox shell up yet. Okay, so this should come apart now. Yep, there we go. Yep, there's some of that nasty green grease there, but it's, I mean, it's kind of on the spur gear, but it doesn't seem like it's on the other gears very much. Not really any on the sector gear. Lots of grease up here, like silicon gel or silicon oil. Plastic spring guide. Very liable to break. Not too much grease on the actual gears, but there's plenty on the surfaces. That's always nice, I guess. Not really. I hate this green grease. There's some shims on the gears. I'm not sure how the shimming is. Once I degrease all this, I mean, look at that. Once I de degrease all of this, I will determine if it needs shimming. Okay, so I cleaned and degreased everything except for the gears and the compression assembly here. This is covered in grease. But I just wanted to test the compression with this. And it is crap. Looks like they over greased this uh, o-ring right here so it's not spreading out very well. There's just almost total compression loss. So I'll have to work on that as well. So I cleaned and degreased the uh, compression assembly here. Um, still fairly bad. It's a little bit better. I can tell there's some more resistance and it's making a little bit more of that uh, noise that it makes. I don't know how you describe it. It's kind of like a squishing noise. I am going to have to do a compression tune-up on that. Right now I'm going to pull the o-ring the, the o-rings off of this and the one off of the cylinder head here uh, and wrap them around the cylinder to stretch them out a bit. Hopefully that'll help a bit uh, and I'll do some other stuff later. Alright, it's been fully cleaned and degreased. Now I'm going to check the shimming on the gears just to see where it's sitting at. Okay, so I've got the gears in with their shims and bearings and uh, I've got the gearbox shell screwed together with them inside. Um, the gears spin uh, nice and freely, however there's a large amount of play in them. As you can see there. Um, the spur gear seems to have the least. The sector and bevel are pretty bad. I mean there are like whole millimeters of up and down movement there. So that's a lot and that's pretty bad. I'm sure that's contributing to the whine that the gun is making. So I will shim this gun using the beveled pinion method and then we'll go from there with the other stuff. Uh, the other thing I have to do is uh, do some compression tuning on this now that these o-rings have been stretched out. So just stretching out the o-rings has helped this much.
there's still some leak but overall it's it's quite good uh, compared to what it was so I'm going to Teflon tape the cylinder head here and then see if there's anything else I can do okay so I put some Teflon tape around the cylinder head there as you can see to seal that up nicely check the compression once more so it, it's getting there still leaking at the uh, the piston head here so I'm wondering if I can replace this piston head and see if we get uh, a better result okay so I just found out that I have no other piston heads uh, so we're gonna have to deal with it the way it is it's I mean it's it's okay a lot better than it was when uh, we first took it apart so that's what we're gonna have to deal with for now okay so I've shimmed the gear set using the beveled opinion method you can see there's a lot less play in the gear now uh, in each one of them there was a lot before and they still spin very smoothly uh, so that's shimmed pretty well I'm going to throw the motor on and do a spin test uh, but to do the shimming I didn't use one specific shim set that like I bought or something that came in a pack uh, I just have all these leftover shims that I pool together and keep in a little bag labeled mixed shims um, for things like this where the the shimming on the gun doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because it's just a low-end gun. Uh, I just essentially use a bunch of different shims in it and try to get rid of some of these other ones. This has SHS shims, JBU shims, Lonex shims, various shims from stock gum, guns like the stock shims that come out of it, as well as Mad Bull shims. So this is basically a combination of all that just because I have a whole bunch of extra shims and uh, want to get rid of them. All right, so I've attached the motor and I've got it uh, plugged into this uh, 9.6 volt by Intellect. And I'm just gonna give it a little spin now. You can see it's spinning quite smoothly. No motor whine or gear whine at all. Uh, so this is good to go. Now I'm gonna relubricate and reassemble everything uh, and this will be pretty much done. I'll just have to work on the barrel components and the gun should be finished, assuming that there are no other issues. Okay, so I've relubricated everything and I've got most of it put back together here. Uh, as you can see, when I do the lubrication, when I grease it, it's much cleaner than the grease that comes stock on it. They just like it looks like they just take a spoonful and stick it onto the gearbox shell and then put the parts in and let it spread itself out. But I used white lithium grease for all of the metal on metal areas like the gears and inside of the uh, bearings here as well as just on the piston rack. And then I used silicon-based stuff for all of the compression parts. So silicon uh, grease, which is basically like a silicon gel. And I used silicon oil as well on certain areas like the tappet plate, the uh, piston rails. Okay, so the gearbox is all reassembled. Have it hooked up to this 9.6 volt. So it is working. Uh, you could see by the way it was blowing this shim over here around that uh, there's plenty of air coming out of it. So now it's just a matter of putting this back into the lower receiver over here and then working on the front end of the gun. Okay, so it's back into the receiver and I've got it plugged into the battery again. So, it's 
working nicely. Um, this battery is not charged up very much, but it's still sounding all right. Um, there's no more gear whine that I notice, at least not as prominently as there was before. There was a really high-end whine that came about during like the middle of a single cycle that it made. And that's gone right now. There's still, I mean, I can't really do much about it just because this motor is not very powerful, but there's still a bit of like a lag, it seems, in the trigger pull. Uh, obviously, that would improve if the motor had a higher torque and the battery were more powerful. So, um, but this is going to be used on lower powered batteries and with this motor because this is just a very basic gun. So I'm going to move on to working on this front end. Shouldn't take very long, just going to be a cleanup of it. So here's the hop up unit. Externally the barrel seems a bit dirty. And right now the hop is turned all the way off. Hop up unit seems a bit greasy. I'll pull that off. There's a black bucking of some sort with a lot of oil on it. There's some dirt there. It's not too bad. I wonder if I should Teflon tape this just to seal it. I'll test what the compression is like at the hop up here. So I'm going to clean this off, uh, clean all the parts, and then we'll see where we can go from there. So this is how dirty the uh, inner barrel was. There's quite a lot on there. And also interesting to note is the mound on the bottom of the pop-up bucking there. It's got a V cut in it. Um, just kind of interesting that that's there. So time to reassemble this and then check compression. So you can check the compression of the hop-up unit by covering these holes and blowing air into the, the end. So you can see there that it's sealing actually quite nicely. You can do it the other way too if you cover the bottom one because that's the way that the air is actually going to be going when it's in the gun. So the seal on that is perfect. I'm going to clean everything out of there because I just blew air into it. Um, so I'm probably not going to do anything else with that. So it's been a little while since I worked on these uh, parts of AKs. But the way this works is there's a little thing like this that has to sit in here. Actually, it has to go between that. So it has to go into there. Like that. And that goes on. Ring goes in front of it. And routes into here. And the point of that piece of metal, that silvery piece, is for it's to hold the spring further that way. So the silvery piece can be there and basically the slide can move against it. The only problem is the silvery piece is detached. Normally it's somehow adhered to that and I need to figure out the right place to put it back to before I reattach it. I think it goes here where this marking is. So what I'm gonna do is put that in. And the most permanent way I can attach this right now I think is just gonna be to glue it. So. Glue it with some super glue. I'm going to use this to wipe the super glue off. Excess super glue. Okay, now hopefully that will hold at least a little bit. Well, 
Oh, it's holding the spring, so that's good. Now the other thing is that down here, uh, another spring goes into there to push the rod back. It sits in there like that. And it, I think that there's something missing up here. Normally there's like a plate that goes on here. It's not in the bag, I don't think. Yeah, it, it's not in there. So, I don't know if this is a different design or if they just stopped doing that or what. I'm not going to worry about it. I also don't know what these parts are that came in the bag. But as far as I can tell, they don't need to be used for anything. Um, this goes back here and it's what pushes through that hole there. And the rod goes back into that. So what I'm going to do is put that there. Actually, I'll do that step last. I'll put it in the opposite direction. Put the front of the rod in first. I despise the design of the AK-47 Airsoft version. The real one is much simpler. As in, like, the real AK. That's why the plate is normally in here, because it holds that together. We'll see. Can I fit this on properly? Oh, that wire has to go in. There we go. Okay, so up front here, I think I figured out what one, at least one of those pins goes to. This one seems to fit into there. I'm not quite sure which one it is. Oh, so it is that one. Really? That looks kind of wonky. I mean, it works. I think I'll leave that decision up to Frank. He can take this out pretty easily if necessary, but why is that locking back? It's getting caught. Alright, so let me get this water out of the way. anything I can oh what the oh there we go I got it yeah it was the uh, safety lever right here it was blocking it so that works in all positions so there you go I'm gonna go outside and shoot it Okay. 
So hopefully you guys could see that. As far as accuracy goes, it's not particularly uh, consistent, but it is a stock gun. Um, it is working at about what I would expect for something in that area. So this gun is ready to go back to Frank once I put the top of it back on. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you guys later.